Now we're going to review the vertical design of the curb return and see how the software has managed it. We're going to go up to the open vertical grading button on the ribbon and then click close to the alignment that's being used for your new curb return. So the software has actually generated a civil site design or if you're using civil 3D, a civil 3D alignment for this particular string. Once you've left clicked, the vertical grading editor will be open. So we're going to just move this either to one side of the current screen or if you're using multiple screens you can move it over there and just going to move the drawing environment over to one side by panning. The reason for this is because we can see as we move our mouse left and right in the vertical grading editor screen the tracker showing us the position of the station. The software has actually calculated the instantaneous grade which are these IPs here, of the incoming uh, road string, which is existing road, and it's picked up the edge of travelway. And it's done the same on the other end. So it's actually picked up the edge of travelway levels sitting on our road one. So these are not editable. I can't do anything with these because they're giving me a live representation of our edge of travelway. What I am able to do is to change what is going on in here. Now, I'm going to uh, make a change to our existing road profile to see what happens with this curb return geometry. You don't need to do this, but you can just uh, watch what happens. We're going to open up the vertical grading for existing road. I'm going to move this over to one side. And I'm going to adjust the same IP that we actually adjusted when we were looking at intersection design. I'm going to use the move IP up and down and as I do this there comes a point where obviously that uh, existing road geometry or profile is not suitable however you can see how the instantaneous grades are being recalculated and civil site design is recalculating what type of profile geometry we need internally so you can see in this example that because these two instantaneous grades do not cross each other within the constraints of the curb return geometry it will force in a reverse curve scenario if however and I'll drop the geometry back down again on existing road the two instantaneous grades do meet each other or cross or intersect within the constraints of the curb return then we will place a single curve for you the curve values are automatically calculated on a curb return by curb return basis. There's no default value for these. I've just clicked to make sure that PVI is somewhere close down to the natural surface. But that was purely to show you an example of what happens with the curb return geometry. I'm going to close down the existing road vertical grading editor. We can make changes to the vertical design. So what I'm going to do is simply left click on the vertical curve and change the vertical curve length. Uh, I'm going to round the number down, make that 27, and then click on apply. As we do this, you will notice that in the drawing environment, we have uh, a couple of white circles appearing. Now I'm going to close the editor for this particular PVI. As soon as you make any kind of edit to the vertical design, we will overwrite the automatic um, readjustment that you saw a second ago and keep the design as it is so we won't be recalculating this curve and just to show you how that works if I open up the vertical grading editor for the existing road again make the same adjustment that we made earlier watch what happens now so you can see that curve is remaining and the instantaneous grades are not being recalculated inside the curve return I'm going to close that down on the vertical grading editor for network strings you will actually see a little padlock icon and that says user design now when we started this was actually set to something else so we're going to click on that we had automatic redesign selected so go and check that box now and then click apply and exit you'll see that the white circles from the drawing have been removed and auto design has been reinstated however the change has not happened on the vertical grading editor so to reinstate the design back to automatic we close it down and simply reopen the vertical grading editor and that will have now made that change for us this now means that any changes we make to the side road or the main road this will be updated now we're going to open up a cross section of our curb return this is a very important aspect of the design 
anywhere in the vertical grading editor we can right click and this will generate a cross-section view for us we're just going to make it a reasonable size and zoom in so we can see what's happening now if you don't already have them displayed make sure you go to the display tab settings button and then show code okay so if you've got other items shown that's fine but show code is very important we're just going to discuss a code which has been added um, onto our cross-section view which is not currently part of either of our row strings and this is the LDUM code. On the cross-section the software will automatically add in a code which will drape itself and you can see the tracker in the drawing in the background against where I'm positioned in the cross-section view. Initially it will place this code on top of the edge of travelway code um, which is representing the existing road. Then as we come around the corner it will drape this code onto the crown of our side road, road 1. And the important thing to note is it's, it's forming uh, two functions. One is to provide a surface on the top, and secondly, it's to allow us to put subgrade underneath. We're now going to look at how we can change different aspects of our curb return and also look at how we can replace the template that's applied to the curb return inclusive of the L dumb code.